Welcome back to Ghost Stories Heathenry. My name is Melissa, and today I want to talk about my tubal ligation procedure and being child free by choice. I also want to talk about some controversial things that might offend some people. But again, if something triggers you, that's on you, boo. That's something you need to heal. That ain't my problem. But you can rant about it in the comments if you'd like, if that'll make you feel better. So, I am now 24. And I got my tubal procedure done when I was 23, I believe. Like, that was about a year ago. So... I want to talk about, like, I have talked a bit about my hormonal journey. Go check out the video, My Bad IUD Experience, where I talked a bit about my bad hormonal experience and how I've had a lot of difficulty with that. So I had a really bad reaction to the IUD, just quick recap. Um, I've been on birth control basically since I hit puberty, and it has not been good for me. Like... I have picked up weight, got stuff like hair loss, acne, really bad symptoms and things that I got with different types of birth controls over the years. So after the uh, whole IUD thing, like I've been on the pill, then I went to the IUD, had a bad experience, talked about that in another video. Then I got the injection. I never really wanted to get the depot shot, but... My mother insisted I be on something and nothing else was working, so I was like, you know, hell, let's try it, you know? So, a little TMI, but I want to know if anyone else had this problem or this reaction with the depo shot. I had severe hair loss. I was, like, nauseous all the time. I was very sick. Hair loss. And I got these weird blister-like things on the site of injection, which was my behind. And... I had those for about a year after I stopped the depot shot. They leave the nastiest scars. It's like these pus full of blister. It's really, really gross. Um, I don't really know what the heck it is, what causes it. My gynecologist didn't seem too concerned. She said my hormones should stabilize and it should work out. And right now it's been about a year and it started showing improvement. I've also slightly started losing weight, naturally, and I'm also trying to get more healthier, drink more water, exercise to, you know, help that a little. Because back then I could do exercise, I could diet, I could do anything. I will not lose a freaking one kilogram of weight. Not even a zero point something kilogram of weight. I just kept picking up weight. And then I just decided, heck with it. I didn't want kids. I have a really bad thing with my brothers. Both my brothers were disabled. My one brother was born disabled due to a chromosomal difference. Well, it's actually a chromosome that's exactly the same in my mother and my father. I was just lucky not to get it. It's called Batten disease. You can go look it up. Uh, you might even find my brother while you're looking it up. His name was Vian. And yeah, it's just... Seeing him like that, the, all the seizures, the doctor gave him three years to live. He was five years and ten months when he passed away. He passed away in 2012. And it just, it, it was a very difficult, very difficult experience, which is part of the reason why I don't want kids. I also had a different brother. He was actually born normal. He was born in 2011, the year before my other brother passed away. And due to doctor neglect, he ended up with severe cerebral palsy. Neither of my brothers could do anything. They both had tubal feeding. They couldn't talk or walk or play or do anything. They were basically just bedridden, just these little bodies that you have to clothe and feed and watch suffer, which is also part of the reason why I'm not really into religion anymore, but that's a different video for a different time. So those contributed greatly to the fact that I didn't want kids and also the state of the world. I'm 24, I'm still unemployed, I'm really struggling and that's why I'm trying to do this online YouTube stuff because I need to make an income. I like doing this and there's a chance that I can maybe make a living off of this so I'm not really doing it for that reason though. I'm just doing it because I enjoy doing this. So... The economy has really 
gone down the drain. I can barely afford to live. I can barely take care of myself. I have a lot of mental health issues. And I'm also, I found out that I'm neurodivergent, which is, it can be genetic. So I just don't want to bring my child into this world just to suffer and to maybe have a future, you know? So I went to a gynecologist and I was very lucky because I, I got a female gynecologist. I had two previous male gynecologists and honestly the one was really good but he retired and the other one was just he was the bedside manner was horrible anyway so i got a female doctor she's amazing she first doctor locked out so she just made sure that i'm aware of all the consequences of getting like my tubes removed and things like that i got the one where they removed the entire tube so i know that one kind of has a different name but whatever you get what I'm saying I got sterilized so I want to talk a little bit about that experience um so she asked me a bunch of questions made sure that I'm like definitely sure I want to do this and yeah I can still get pregnant if I want so for those of you looking to get this procedure it's basically 100% if you do end up getting pregnant it will mo it will most likely end up not being viable and you'll either have a miscarriage or or an ectopic pregnancy which you're gonna have to get removed which is also why I believe that abortion is women's rights okay there's a lot of scenarios where that is absolutely necessary so the thing is you can still get pregnant if you got a tube ligation it's just it depends on what surgery you got and yeah it it can still happen and you can perhaps still have a viable pregnancy just something to keep in mind um, if you're looking to get this done and also if you really want kids after getting your tubes tied You can do it via implantation so you can still get children if you want to it's just gonna be a lot more expensive But honestly if you can afford that procedure, then you're probably financially stable to take care of a kid. Okay So the procedure was pretty straightforward. I went to the doctor explained my situation to her She basically gave me an examination. We booked the date when in the day for surgery. Now, I live in South Africa, so yeah, you wait a whole freaking ass day for surgery. It's really, I'm on a medical aid, by the way, so, you know, I'm, I'm like a private medical, yeah. So it's not even like the state medical. I don't want to get into that here, but yeah, you wait a long time. It's just boring. You just lay in a hospital bed and just freaking yourself out and eventually you calm down I guess like maybe that's the point of it so that you can work out your stress I don't know but the staff of the hospital they were really accommodating and I went into the procedure and when I went in my fiance was with me basically all the whole day he was amazing through the whole process and yeah he also don't want kids we had a whole conversation about that but when when I went in like all the hospital staff was like, you know, really really nice with me It was like winter. They made sure that I have like heating blankies and everything and They they asked me like several times if I'm certain and a lot of them were like quite confused of Why someone of my age would want to get sterilized? so yeah Went under they did the procedure came out didn't really you know, feel my, I, I get weird with anesthesia. Sometimes I struggle to wake up, but this was a, you know, it wasn't too bad when I woke up. Didn't feel too much pain. I could feel like they did something in my abdomen. And I got three incisions. One was in my belly button. The other one was on my left side on the lower part of my belly. And the other incision was just basically above the bladder area where your stomach basically ends. They were pretty small incisions. They call it keyhole surgery. And they removed my entire tubes, both tubes. And they also burned off some cysts because I have ovarian cysts. So they burned that off and like burned the inner lining of my uterus because apparently my ovaries are working overtime. They produce too much, which causes me to, my, it causes my period to be like out of whack and also for me I experienced a lot of sharp pain on my left side which since they burned off the cysts and things it's I haven't really experienced it because if I sat down for a long period of time 
it just hurt a lot and I don't have that anymore. I'm a lot better. I have a lot more energy. It took, like, she, she said it's going to take a long time for my hormones to stabilize, especially after the depo shot. And it's been a year now. My hormones have literally just started to normalize. I'm starting to lose weight naturally. I haven't changed anything to my diet. I've only started drinking water, like, I think a few days ago, which I already lost 3 kgs or 4 kgs before I even started drinking the water. So I'm... I'm interested to see what's gonna happen now. I did try to exercise, exercise for like two weeks, then stuff happened and I just fell out of that a little bit and now I just, I kind of want to get back into that. I'm like on my fitness journey. I made a separate page of, it's called Melodramatic Minx. I will link it down below where I'm gonna do pole fitness. I just want to get like more financing, but I'll also do some other types of fitness on there and just some health stuff. Like I'm a little bit of on a health journey now that I can finally take care of my body. It feels like I finally took back ownership of my body. So yes, I'm child free by choice. There are many reasons why does the surgery hurt? Yes. It it does. Like, honestly, I expected a lot worse, though I prepared myself for a lot. I actually got up and walked almost immediately because I had to pee. Like, I don't know, like, they, they said it's good. Like, the nurse was so impressed. I wasn't actually supposed to get out of bed alone, but, like, yeah, I was like, I need to pee. I, I called the nurse. I was like, need to go to the bathroom now and I really want to like get dressed because it was winter it was cold I was just like in that you know hospital thing it wasn't like doing much for me so I was like I'm gonna get up I got up I walked I went to the bathroom came back my fiance helped me get dressed the nurse was so impressed she was like you know not a lot of people got that type of surgery gets up so quick and I they said it's a good thing you know usually after surgery the faster you get moving the better so after that, I was basically in bed for like, I think a good solid three, four days that I was like fully just laid down. Like it was basically a week in total that I spent most of my time in bed, basically just did walking to the toilet, just minimal movement. After that, I slowly started walking farther distances. The whole recovery process though, took about two weeks for me to fully like actually like walk normal and like not be like hunched over and the pain was really I expected worse my scars healed um pretty fast like my my stitches were in a little longer than they should have been because they were supposed to dissolve and apparently they used a new type of stitches that were a bit too strong so they didn't dissolve so the stitches didn't dissolve and um we ended up removing them ourselves they were just quite tiny the gynecologist was fine I went for my checkup everything was good um, I almost have no scarring from the surgery, only the one in my belly button, but, I mean, it's in my belly button, you can't really see much. And, yeah, I, like I said, I'm just a lot better off, like, being not, birth control, and, it's just, the chemicals and stuff, it's, it messes with your hormones, and your hormones, turns out, is very, very fragile. And it's just... It messes with your brain chemistry. It, it literally messes with every part of your body. And for those of you who don't know, estrogen actually turns into fat if it's not used. So if you have too much estrogen, you're gonna have a lot of excess fat around your butt, your upper legs, your hips, and your belly. So fun. And also too much progesterone can turn into testosterone, which will cause you know, those hairs or like even hair loss, this hair loss. And I got severe acne with too much progesterone. So that's just like a few things. I really recommend the surgery. I definitely, if you want to like, if you, if you are in South Africa and you live in like the general area where I'm from and you want a good doctor, I will hook you up with a good doctor, but there's also a list that you can access through Reddit. I added this doctor to that list, by the way, because she's just amazing. It's uh, on Reddit, Child Free Doctors or something like that. Go check it out. Go Google it. You'll find the list. I'll try to find it and link it down below as well for you guys to make it a bit easier. But you can find doctors in any country that are willing to do sterilization procedures for both men and women. This video is predominantly just my experience as a woman with this, but if you're a guy and you want to get, like, 
you know, sterilization. There's doctors on there for that. And yeah, like if you're child free by choice and you have people pestering you about stuff, if you really, really want people to stop talking to you, my next thing, the next time someone is like, when are you having kids? I'm going to tell them like, I'm pregnant and then I'm going to wait a few like weeks or so, maybe a month or two. And then I'm going to tell them I had a miscarriage. Like seriously, um, it's, uh, I saw this advice actually on a different video, how to get family members to stop asking you invasive fucking questions because as family, for some reason they think it's acceptable to ask you these things when you're getting married, when, when you're having kids, it's none of your goddamn business, Susan, that's what it is. Anyway, so I support child free by choice, I support abortion rights, and I just... I really recommend the procedure. I expected way worse, really. Like, I, I had really bad period cramps, by the way, and I, I was quite used to it. You, you do have a lot of abdominal, abdominal cramping after the procedure, and it's just, you, you bleed, obviously. It's, you're gonna bleed. You, you got surgery in a very intimate place. It, it, it bleeds for a while. I bled for, like, I think two two days. Um, so it's not too bad. It's for, it, the operation really depends on the individual okay? But for me, really, it was not that bad. On a pain scale, I'd rate it like six and a half out of ten. About, for me, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, like, I can handle pain. I'm pretty tolerant to pain. So, for me, about six and a half out of ten, I I recommend. Like, definitely, if, you, if you're scared to get this procedure, really, it's not. Just find yourself a good doctor, it's really not that bad. It really isn't. Really, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure giving birth would hurt a lot more. So, yeah, honey, if you're if you're scared of having kids because of the pain and you're scared about tubal ligation because of the pain, it's not that bad. Honestly, it really isn't. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions or if you'd like me to do, like, a little Q&A about this where you can ask me questions about this whole procedure or, like... You know, talk about some woman stuff. You know, drop it down in the comments. If you had this procedure, let me know what your experiences was. I would love to know, you know, different experiences. I like reading people's stories if they have different experiences. I just, I was lucky to get a doctor who was willing to do it at my age so quickly and without questions asked. And I was just lucky, I guess, because she was a good doctor. She did the sutures pretty well. I had minimal pain, minimal scarring. Really, I didn't have much issues with the whole procedure. My hormones are finally starting to stabilize. I'm doing a lot better. Depression things still a little fluctuating, but honestly, it was way worse, way worse. Like I told you guys, with a freaking IUD, I was basically bedridden for almost a year, over exaggerating a wee bit, but I, I was in bed like half a month of each month. So, practically, like, at least half the year then. So, that is basically just my experience. And, yeah, I, I hope you guys have an absolutely fabulous day wherever you are, or night. And thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye!